Lights are beating down the rainy street. All the faces that I meet tell me I'm wrong. A bright staring at the neon signs making up a storyline. Gotta hold on. And I love... Poland is ready to take us for a ride, and the man doing it is Rafał. Hello. Hello, hello. Yes, I'm Rafał, and you are William. So I'm very pleased to see you, and uh, I can say only hello to everybody. Oh, it's great to see you. You seem to be in very good spirits. Uh, how are you doing? <laughs> Yeah, actually, um, it's a hard uh, time right now for preparation. But if you feel that you're doing everything well um, with your uh, process, uh, I, I want to be prepared for 100% and then enjoy that. So now it's hard work. And if it's hard work, it's also a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of intentions and a lot of stuff around. And I like it. I like to work when it's uh, when you see the results that everything goes in the right, the right direction. And just so we know, where are you right now? Are you at home? Yes, I'm uh, at my house and uh, at my apartment in Warsaw, a capital city of Poland. Uh, so um, yeah, I'm online here from Warsaw. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of people want to know, when did you first hear the song The Ride and why did you want to sing it? All right. So this is a funny story with this song and with all those things, because I, I wasn't prepared for Eurovision for this year. I started to work at, at my album, my solo album. album I want to, re I want to re release that at uh, autumn this year because I have 10th anniversary of my solo work like as a musician. This year, I started like 10, 10 years ago with the voice of Poland. I mean, solo career, of course. I, I was a, a singer before that, but solo 10 years. So I started to have a, a record the album with different songs and also songs uh, uh, in style, which I like it during those 10 years. And I tried to see what's what is now new a little bit uh, and on, on time, I can say that it's popular right now, the, the, the style of music. And uh, I love the sound of retro and 80s and those stuff like The Weeknd or Dua Lipa. So I tried to um, call to all, all of my friends. Uh, and one of this friend is Thomas Carson from Sweden, uh, because we were working together about uh, like three years ago with one song uh, when the so on the songwriting camp. So I call him, do you have a song with a little bit disco, retro, energetic, you know, moving? Uh, yeah, I have uh, like two songs to, in style of that. And he, sings, and he sent me two songs. And one of that was The Ride. And I say, yeah, that's the song I wanted. But it was with the um, uh, female vocal, Clara Rubenson. She sings a demo because she's a co-writer co for that. And I say, can I take it and make a Polish version? And they say, yeah, you can try, you can do it with, with this. Uh, and, and you started. So when the, I, I'm, maybe I'm, I'm, I'm talking too much, but this is a process. So I, I wanted to record that song for my album. And when Polish TV decided to um, ask few artists for the song, Eurovision songs, but they want to have energetic songs. So I send this proposition and say, and I give them and they call me back in two days that we love this song and the ride is the one. So it was really uh, amazing. Uh, and when I hear first time this song, I knew that it will be good for me right now. Um, good production, uh, good style and something new with the retro style. I'm a retro, as you see, so uh, everything is, you know, uh, everything is prepared for that. And I love that, uh, the, that song. And I, I think it's, it's amazing. And uh, I, like, I like to sing that. And so that's interesting. So this song was born for your music career, not just for Eurovision. Yes, of course. I think 
they they uh, they write for some kind of big pur purpose but i just call for the, for this good song and uh, then it becomes uh, uh, our proposition for eurovision so this is really funny story with this and really strange you can say that uh, the the song is about now uh, also what it is in my life so this is really strange. I feel that I'm singing that and I know this text, but it's about me right now, but what's going on in my private life and everything is going crazy. So uh, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. Mm. Ah, so the song, the ride maybe is a source of strength with difficulties in your personal life. Yeah, but I didn't expect that it will happen uh so fast so so i start to sing this song and everything changed with my life so i need to go right now for the gold and never touch the ground and go high <laughs> and just write for the life uh and that's that's uh that's a really really tough situation right now and i think the song is really uh for me maybe it, it wasn't a purpose to write a song for me but now i can say the song was waiting for me, for sure, for 100%. Ah, and is this difficulty the pandemic? Or is it something else? No, I, I mean, uh, you know, uh, I, I spread with my uh, fiancé for, we were like engaged for eight years. So we got some, some situation between us, very gentle, but everything is right now new for me. So everything with the song, you, you know, if you, if you, if you heard the refrain of the song, it's, uh, so baby, uh, uh, come on for the ride of my life, uh, high above ground. Uh, and it, it's about sometimes a toxic relation or, or good relation on that. You can say, you can go with me with this ride. Uh, we go high or just give me an air, a space and place to go up. And this is all about with the song, with the ride, you know. So you can say that it's only the ride for just, you know, for fun. You go around the city during the night and you see the neons and everything is okay. But if you look forward to that, it's about the relations. And I didn't expect that it happens to, to me this way when I have in this song. So this is amazing. Well, we wish you much luck as your ride continues. A yeah. road to happiness awaits. <laughs> and the music video is a real highlight. The Neon Museum. We were all Googling. This is very cool, this place. Could you tell us about the music video? Of course. Uh, this, uh, this is uh, really uh, something really incredible because we have a museum from, uh, of neons from 80s. So they are really old and they are really uh, classic and they are really in good condition still. So, uh, you know, in nearly 80s, uh, we have different um, uh, situation, uh, political situation in, uh, uh, in uh, Poland. So w when I was a kid, uh, because I'm from 80s, so I remember those neons and they were something new, modern, incredible. And we have the uh, in Warsaw the uh, place uh, where when you, you can go inside and see what's going on. And uh, the idea was uh, to uh, take a shot inside of this. And uh, uh, so it makes a lot of colors, a lot of energy, and it makes a lot of um, uh, really good creation. This is um, an idea of our director. And he decided to go into the museum and then just let's go with that. So we push, we put a drones inside. So we have a quick cameras moving, rollings. So everything it was really amazing with the dancers, with the choreography inside. And uh, they are really classics. And the Polish people, they know those neons. And it's about, you know, it's about... Um, uh, old-fashioned but very famous things like you know in in Warsaw history in Polish history uh, the companies they didn't exist anymore but it's something about historical and if we compare those classic style those retro and 80s to the uh, of course something modern and with the technology 
We have retro, but something fresh and something new. And we decided to do that the same with the music and the same with the video. Ah, and one comment we read on YouTube, which made us laugh. Someone said, don't trust anyone who wears glasses inside. <laughs> yeah, uh, of course, if, if, if they say that. <laughs> <laughs> You know, uh, there's a funny story with that, and I think it's it's also the idea of our director to to uh, to take those glasses. Like, it's you are inside a some kind of video game from really '80s, and if you look that, you know that uh, all those uh, really classical uh, video clips they were a glass. It was something that you have in this period of time, a lot of funny glasses or hair or whatever. So, uh, but it's only video and it's one of creation and one of idea to, to do that. And, and I'm also a lot of, uh, I, I do a lot of hosting in TV. So I don't have a glasses there. So if I'm singing now, there, this look is a little bit different different right now that you are in the music in the right and you can see uh, for this guy with the glasses and you can say oh that's a Rafael from Poland because he wears the glasses so um, it's really uh, recognizable right now so this is one of idea for creation of the song and the right yeah I quite liked your uh, performance on the voice kids recently and we oh, also, it was nice. We saw the glasses as well. And so I was wondering, is Rafal playing a character? Like, is he a, a particular person in the ride that's maybe different from the real Rafal? Uh, you know, sometimes, of course, uh, we changed the, this for, for the, uh, the voice kids. And I was just staying around in one place and just sing that song. Um, it was a lot of dancers, a lot of a lot of choreography, but I think uh, I was in the song from the uh, beginning to the end. A uh, little bit acting, but still, it's it's something uh, that is also with me. That I like these songs, I like these tensions, uh, I like this beat. So I think it's it's really. Um, it's really with me right now. It's like uh, a part of me. So, uh, of course, uh, in normal life, you, you are different and you are a different person. You can talk a little bit. I want to laugh. I, I like jokes. I have a lot of energy, a lot of passions to, to do that and create that. But in the song, it's, it is a little bit of... Uh, acting but not so much you need to you need to act but you need to be a real on the stage if you are not you are only cheap actor you know and that's it. that's <laughs> it <laughs> and your live on tape performance the backup recording how did that go oh, i like that it was really nice but we have like only three days for the for this for doing that show and was really you know because um uh, we, when you have an energetic song, you need to create uh, something with the choreography, with the movements. If you have a ballad, the choreography is sometimes destroying your, your performance. You know, it's, it really needs to be gentle. But in this, you, uh, we decided all with all our crew and team to have good choreography for that. So we took the best choreographer and the best dancers in Poland uh, with the fault and Agustina Gurola, he's one of the best here. And uh, so uh, the the movements and everything is really hard if you sink and move and going forward, back and a little bit tense, and you need to sing live. So for me, it was a little bit hard to to compare all those elements. You know, singing, uh, dancing moving and control everything and the shots and the cameras. So I have only three days for that. And, and I was really, in, I, I enjoyed that. So it was okay, really nice. Uh, but 
I feel much better to sing it live in Rotterdam. And uh, if I, I just heard uh, this information that we are going there. So uh, it will be different a little bit, but a lot of part of video clip, they are inside the show. So of course, the, those movements a little bit, all the neons from the museum, they're on the screens. So we have the sense of, uh, of this, but different choreography and different show. Brilliant. And Eurovision fans remember you almost went in 2017. You were so close behind Kaja Moss with Sky Over Europe. Rewinding to that moment, were, were you very upset? You had just missed out? No, I think it was different uh, state of mind. Uh, uh, with me in this period of time. Uh, I didn't realize what is probably Eurovision. I thought about the concert and the contester and the, to be a contester, but uh, the, the song was a story, was a story about immigrations, about the, all the political situation with those borders. And we have a problem with that in this period of time. So I, I decided to sing a song about something but uh i didn't expect i didn't know uh n- nothing right now now i'm in this eurovision contest and i'm i meet my i can meet you i can meet a lot of uh, journalists and fans of eurovision and all the other contesters and i know now what is all about uh, inside the big community and people the fans of eurovision but it's in the spirit of time, I was like, you know, okay, I sing the song. If I can go, it's okay. If not, that's a shame a little bit, but I'm a sportsman. So maybe later, maybe in a few years, maybe someday, but maybe never. Uh, so, yeah, of course, if you lose like only three points or four points, it's like, you know, you say, oh my God, only this so close. Uh, I think um, I was uh, joking and uh, laughing that I have a song in Polish, very famous here. Uh, the title is So Close. The, the title of this song is So Close. It is Tag Blisko in Polish, so it's so close. So <laughs> to say that it was so close, I said, okay, I need to uh, change the song for for another title, you know, like... I'm in, or, you know, I won that. It was so funny. And you have a very unique position because you hosted Junior Eurovision already. Did that teach you anything about the community or Eurovision? Oh, yeah. So, yes, of course. You know, um, it's all about like, regulations. You know, I'm, I think I'm, I'm the third one uh, of the... They told me that it was only three person that they were hosting, and now they are as a contesters in a big Eurovision, of course, hosting junior Eurovision. But um, you know what's really uh, super with the situation that they explain me all the uh, voting system. I know all the situation what could can go go wrong, what can be okay. Why is that? Why is that? And why you do that? So you know everything you know from behind, what's going on, the dairy households and uh, the regulations that unify, that everything is unified. And uh, of course, uh, uh, the people in the community inside, but th- there were kids and they are really right now very famous artists. For example, Vicky Gabor, Roxana Wengel, Roxy, they made a huge career in Poland after winning the Eurovision. Uh, uh, Fran- France uh, with uh, with this competition with Jimaji, so the song is really really nice, and we have a lot of fun uh, hosting that with Ida and Mogosha, and it was really good, great, and the kids were wonderful, and uh, so it teach you a lot of things, and you feel the the tension. It was in the studio because we didn't have a lot of audience with just a few of them, of big fans of Eurovision. But if you say hello, Europe, and now you're going for the final score and you say that into the camera, 
you feel the tension and you feel this energy that's a, a really big audience in front of you, like millions, because we have like six million in only in Poland, but outside was the like big, big um, community. Every uh, watchers were just, you know, taking uh, cross and fingers crossed for their country. So you feel this tension. And that's the wonderful thing in the being a host uh, of Junior Eurovision, Junior Eurovision. And you recently, I guess, hosted Sunit in Poland. She came to visit. What was that yes. like? What do you remember? Oh, it was wonderful. She is great. I'm her big fan right now because of her behaving. She behaved like a star on the stage, but she behaved like a friend when you talk with her. So this is a very big, uh, something unique uh, because I've met a lot of people here. Also uh, in, in Poland, we have a lot of stars. They, they came here to, for, for the show. So someone, some of them, they were really cool. But some of them, they were had like, you know, very nice, but, uh, you know, uh, distance. COVID distance and uh, private distance and live distance. But she is really fantastic and uh, amazing. I love this adrenalina, this her performance with that, and we uh, made a fun uh, with uh, Waterloo, with her version. So uh, for us, it was something incredible. We sing in Italian, we uh, talk in English. We're fun. We have fun, uh, and now she's one of my friends. And uh, but we are still. Uh, competitors we, we need we need to go <laughs> uh, and and fight on the stage but i feel in this way that is really incredible warsaw krakow novi dwar mazowiecki <laughs> yeah <laughs> wonderful google um translate so we read this is where you're from could you tell us about where you're from Yeah, so my, Krakow maybe not, but Warsaw for sure, uh, because I was born here in Warsaw, uh, and I live near Warsaw, Nowy Dwór Mazowiecki. It's a, a small city, just like 30 kilometers from uh, from uh, Warsaw, and we have an, another airport there in Modlin. So uh, it's so close, still so close with my song, you know. <laughs> so. Uh, and uh, I uh, grew up also on the south of the Poland. Poland, uh, maybe not a Krakow, but Zamość. It's a big, uh, it's a small city, but not so so small as Nowy Dwór Mazowiecki, because my father is from this uh, part. Uh, and uh, I spend a lot of time on Mazurian lakes in Poland. Uh, some part of my Uh, li uh, living uh, situation was on the uh, north by the sea and Krakow and Zakopane mountains. I spend a lot of time there with um, uh, with this community. So it takes me from place to place, from one to another, but mostly in the center of Poland and Warsaw and this, uh, the capital here. I was I had my uh, education here and study. Uh, so, or so. Now, we read you were a champion wrestler. Very, You were winning competitions, but then it had to stop. Why did it stop? Maybe not a champion, you know. Uh, the bronze medalist and uh, uh, champion of, of Poland is not a champion, but you got a medal. Uh, <laughs> yes, but, you know, it's about... Um, uh, Two things, because I have two passion in this time. Music, I started work as a musician and being a wrestler and being a fighter and being uh, in the sport because I was studying on Academy of Physical, Physical Education in Warsaw, being a teacher maybe in the future or work and sport industry um, because you wanna, you can be a manager on the fitness gym and you, you can work with the kids or the teams. And I like that. But the second thing was, you know, that you, you play in the band and you sing the song. And I decided to change a little bit my life and decide what is better for me right now, to be in a sportsman or to be an artist. 
And I decided to stay as an artist. And of course, I had a lot of injuries and with my bags, I still have a lot of problems right now. It's a lot of pains of my neck and hair. Uh, uh, so I need to all the time uh, being uh, in uh, sport activity uh, because if you are not moving, everything is not so well with your body. Uh, as a uh, professional sportsman, you need to be all the time uh, with a sport. So I, I decide that. I just changed the, the way of my life to uh, first position musician and being with the music industry and then the sports activity, maybe, or, you know, so it's ha happened like a passions, some injuries, some problems with the health, but I didn't, I just realized that I, I will be not a champion of Europe with the wrestling because it's, you need to uh, work so much hard with this period of time to be a champion. But you did kind of compete again in other physical activities like dancing with the stars. Oh, cha, yeah. cha, cha. <laughs> <laughs> was this very demanding you know if you start to dance with uh, uh, with the cha 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 rumba or salsa or waltz and uh, you never did that before you realize that you have a muscles inside your body that you never used to it <laughs> you, ne you never did that and you say, why? It's, a, it's amazing. You, you, now, it, um, so uh, it was a really um, a nice period of my life and uh, good, really, uh, uh, some, some uh, like, uh, you, you know, th this, um, this all uh, stuff, they, uh, they teach me a lot of things with that. But after that, I say never again to dance with the classical stuff. Now I have uh, the movements or of the modern dance, not a, uh, you know, uh, standards or classic Latino dancing. It's something different. That if you dance at salsa with a few movements, it's okay. But if you dance cha-cha with all those... Uh, you know, technical stuff with your legs. You feel the pains everywhere. So it's a little bit strange, funny, um, but I like it. Uh, I, I say, okay, thank you so much. It was a, a one <laughs> big show in my life and that's enough. Thank you. <laughs> well, you're very good under pressure, it would seem, having to deal with live situations. You hosted Wheel of Fortune the big yeah. game show. Did anything ever go wrong doing that? Oh, of course. Uh, you know, it's not a live TV. Uh, Wheel of Fortune, it's not a live. It's, uh, it's rec recorded. It's recorded. Yeah. Uh, you need to record like four or five uh, episodes every day. The same like uh, show, we, w w which I'm not now doing, uh, named that tune. Yeah, got Melodia, five or six shows per day, if you record that. Uh, but sometimes it's funny uh, situation about the contestors, and they can say something funny, and they can change a little bit, and you have a lot of fun, a lot of fun explanation. Of course, in the Wheel of Fortune, I decided to sing a little bit, but it was sing for fun. It was sing for... Uh, you know, uh, it, it should be light and uh, really uh, funny uh, with the sense of humor. And sometimes people here in Poland, they don't understand what I'm doing. You know, uh, I was laughing and having fun and they say, what is he doing? It's a, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, you know, um, a comedy or not. I say, yeah, it's a little bit comedy part in this because it's a everyday show and you need to do something funny. But, it was a, a big success, big success with this. We have a lot of uh, fans and, uh, you know, uh, it was a big um, community. They people watch that every day. 
And then I change after two days, after two years of Wheel of Fortune, I, I change uh, this uh, format to name that tune, Yakato Melodia, it's everyday show. And it's better right now for me because it's about the music. It's about the music stars, about the music titles and the songs. So I'm in and I know a lot of music right now. I can be uh, the creator of that, but, it, but, uh, but there are famous songs, so there are covers. And now I feel that I'm getting back to my business. Uh, I'm a creator one more time of the music and of the reality right now. So being a, a musician, it's that you, you, you need to do something new, something new in the market. And a final question, which you're going to be asked so many times in Rotterdam. Okay. Do you have a message for all of your new international fans? Yes, of course. Uh, first of all, a many greetings for, from my country to all the fans. And uh, it's a big chance and big opportunity to be uh, a part of this big community. So thank you for that. And uh, let's, let's be open in this year because we have the, uh, you know, the statesman is about open up this year. Yeah. So that's why I'm uh, sending invitations to all the artists. Maybe you will join me with the live session. Now we can talk. And uh, I talk with Angelina from Albania, and now we are getting close to another artist to talk about, because it's a really hard time for the artist, because there are, there are no concerts, it's a pandemic, and they are staying at home, they, are, they miss for the audience, they miss for the concerts, and I really want to be a part of uh, someone that can tell you it will be okay in the future and you will have those artists and we want to play for you guys. And we want to create new music and for, for the passion, for the love, for everything. So let's be in a big community with love to everyone, everyone. Yeah. And that's the best thing I can now say. Uh, be honest, true and open for everybody. We are so excited that you will be delivering a performance at our online concert, the Wee Wee Jam on May 19th. Everyone can look yeah. forward. <laughs> yeah, that's super. <laughs> he is Rafal from Poland. The song is The Ride. Semi-final two. You need to watch and you need to vote for Rafal. <laughs> Get him into the final. Rafal, thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Um, I'm sorry, maybe I'm 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 try, uh, I'm you know talking too much sometimes, but uh, but you know it's it's good to explain everything what you have uh, to ask me, and uh, I have opportunity right now to to answer all the questions. And so thank you so much, and hugs from Poland, and hope to see you in Rotterdam. You promised that. <laughs>